Good evening and welcome to Back Chat. I'm your host, Tava Madima. This evening, we are chatting to Ashley Blocky Smith. He is with us uh, in this uh, building. So, welcome everybody. He's a middle distance slash steeplechase athlete, a phenomenal runner. Um, he's been having a good year so far. So, we're going to catch up with him and hear what is happening. What a guan. Good evening, South Africa. Good evening, wherever you are around the world. If you're watching and tuned in, good to see you. Tobela! Hinda, welcome guys, good to see you all. This is Back Chat, proudly hosted by Back Track. This is Back Chat. All right, I see Blocky's in the building. He's just going to send me a request and we're going to go live. Yes, sir. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope everybody is healthy and strong. Hey, Blocky. Hola Timba, can you hear me? I can hear you, I can hear you. What's good, yes, what's man. good? I'm good on yourself. I'm good, man. Uh, good to see you. Uh, I see the hair's short, which means uh, you're in dangerous mode at the moment. Eh? No, we're just enjoying the process, you know. This has nothing to do with the shape, you know. This has nothing to do with the shape. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. No, I see, I see. Uh, yeah, no, you've been, uh, you've been causing a lot of havoc, uh, obviously. Uh, on the track, which is always good to see, man. Uh, it's always good to see. How have you been otherwise? How is 2021 holding you? Like, I'm just taking it one day at a time, you know. I'm not getting ahead of myself. So, I'm just enjoying yeah. the process. I'm focusing on what I can focus. Because, you know, it's uncertain times. So, I can't hey. get ahead of myself. So, I'm just enjoying it one day at a time. Absolutely, man. I hear you. I see Coach Bentley is in the building. Uh, welcome to Coach Bentley. Uh, welcome to Jerry Matsao. We've got Adrian... Vilt uh, Hunt, he's in the building. Uh, welcome to Andre Ricks. Adam Lipschitz is in here as well. Uh, Christelle Kralings here. Henry Makanya, welcome guys. Uh, a lot of people are fun. Bake, uh, Sean. Good to have you guys. We got his quote out. So, yeah, I'm going to try to cover as many of those as possible. But, yeah, man. Good to have you. Thanks for, for making time, man. I know uh, you are busy. You are busy cooking PBs. Uh, but to make time, man. Uh, yeah, for us, it's always good, you know? <laughs> yes, definitely. You know, sponsors, they want to see the exposure, they want to see the athletes in these things. So we're just doing what we can do to pay them also for what they're paying us for. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, shout out for, I saw you you with uh, Under Armour, you know, this year. You know, that, that, that's big stuff, you know, encouraging to a lot of athletes as well. So yeah, keep it up, man. Keep it up. Thank you, man, Temba. Thank you, thank you. All right, so I'm going to do uh, what we usually do here. So I'm going to start with an introduction so that uh, the people who are watching here can know exactly who we are dealing with, you know. And then from there, we will get started with the chat. Is that cool? Definitely. That's okay, yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with us this evening, we've got Ashley, Blocky Funny Plain, Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Listen up, he is uh, the World University Games 3000 meter steeple chase bronze medalist. We're going to go with that. Uh, SA, <laughs> SA University Championship 3000 meters to which is gold medalist, as well as the SA under 23 cross country championship bronze medalist. Ladies and gentlemen, Ashley Smith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, it's a uh, you know, the CV it, it might look short, man, but I think there's there's, a, there's so much power in there. And when I, when I look at what, what's to come as well, I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of things to come. You know, people don't know that you're only 24 years old, man, turning 25 later this year. Yeah. So, I mean, for middle distance running, you're still a bambino, you know. So, there's, there's, there's definitely... I, I, I feel like I have 10 years still left in the tank. Exactly. 10 years. No, so, absolutely. it's a lot of time. Absolutely. So, it's exciting, man. It's really exciting uh, to see what, what the future is going to hold. And yeah, so let, let's start with the first question I'm going to ask you. What is your nickname? What, the nickname, where does it come from? What does it mean? Okay, like <laughs> this is a very popular question lately, I see. Um, <laughs> but here in my area, they call me, they call me Copper. So if you know what that means, usually I have a big head. So when I, <laughs> when I went to high school, the guy started calling me Blocky. And then yeah. ever since then, I gave that name and I just embraced it. I didn't find a problem with it. And like you can see, it's on social media. I just love it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Keep the, the nickname. It's working, man. And yeah, I mean, just embrace it. Uh, Definitely. Your identity, you know, a blocky, funny plane. 
Yeah, that's who you are, man. <laughs> All right, so so let, let's talk about your 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 running. Where did this start? Were you always uh, a runner, or did you start nah. swimming? Uh, did you nah, I, what were you doing before yeah. this? Yeah, so I hated this thing, yo. You know, we hate running. Because I remember in primary school when they would come fetch me for cross country and I would run away because I want to come play soccer in the streets. <laughs> so, like, this is like, a late, I feel like the, that's the reason why I'm a late bloomer also. Because mm. I was still playing soccer till around about 2015. Yeah. Only, the only reason I stopped playing soccer was when I enjoy, joined in Eurocad. And then the American opportunity started presenting itself. And that's the reason yeah. why I stopped playing soccer. And I'm like, nah, I, I just saw his God is working mysterious. So the fact that he's giving opportunities in running, I must leave the soccer thing now. <laughs> Absolutely. Position, what position were you playing on soccer? Yo, left back, right back, center back, anywhere at the back. Okay, defender. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But you look like a striker. When I see when you come over the line, uh, and <laughs> you know, what you pick up. Whether it's a mile, the hands are here. That's a striker mentality, Moz. You, you see, I mean, like, we work hard. So if you reach a milestone, whatever the case may be, you have to enjoy that moment. Because when yeah. when it's the next day, it's, it's done now. So you have to go back to the drawing board, so focus, whatever the case may be, you see. So just get carried away for that moment. But when you wake up the next morning, it's a new day, new opportunity to be better. Yeah, absolutely. I like that, man. You know, because uh, I'm, 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 I'm a fan of of uh like the ethics you know like celebrate backflips you know patuchezo had that same thing yeah and people it's fun man it, it makes it makes the sport fun you know like, exactly. the, like the sport is honestly you, no one watches athletics in south africa so whatever we can do to make it fun by all means we should make it fun Absolutely. like remember remember that year when it was the full up and everyone was chowing each other You see how the, <laughs> how good the sport was that season. Now ima- yeah, imagine yeah. if we continuously doing with the amount of endorsement deals, the sponsors, whatever the case, it would be so much better. Not just yeah. for the ad- like the sport as a whole and for the athletes. Absolutely. I mean, it's end of the day it's entertainment. That's why you want to watch. Definitely. Sports. Um, besides, um, you know, you being able to do what uh, no- the normal person can't do and run, you know. Now, end of the day, it's it, it's the showmanship and you know that part of the world, that side of it, the stories, you know, the stories that people get to hear about athletes, where you come from, and all that. That's what ends up, you know, being most attractive. So Definitely. now I'm with you on that one. <laughs> Definitely. So talk about your early days. So obviously, you didn't you didn't enjoy uh, running in the beginning. So how, how how did it come about? How, how, what you said uh, the injury kid convinced you? Yeah. But at what point did you realize, nah, man, I can actually I can run, you know? Like like I said, I'm a late bloomer, Timba. So the, I only won my first racing grade ten, yeah. and my first VP title when I was grade twelve. And then yeah. 2015 at SA Juniors, I finished fourth, and I wasn't happy because I was like, this is gonna be my last race after this. I I'm done running. <laughs> But then I finished fourth, and I was like, I I can't leave it like this. And at the time, I came one essays and was like, "Hey, I must get this guy back." But I never got the opportunity to get this guy back. And then he left for America. So I felt like the fact that I finished fourth at SA Juniors in Bloom in 2015, that was the whole game changer because that whole winter, I was basically running myself into the ground. I was running, yo, I probably like at like 130 k's at that point as an 18, 19 year old. So I was basically yeah. just running myself into the ground. And then the following season, my first year as a senior, that's when I ran like the the three forty seven, I think, yeah. And then I saw, hey, Koi, this is it, because I I went, I broke my PB with nine seconds, three forty six to three forty seven. And then yeah. ever since then, it's history because that's when I got the opportunities from America and stuff. And I was like, hey, here's the reason for me to be in this sport still. So. Yeah. So let's talk about that. I, 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 I hope I don't forget this question. I must write it down. But the first one, obviously. Um, America, the opportunity to to go to America. How how, how did this come about? Obviously, you you ran the time and uh, the times for them times really matter. So talk talk about the journey towards there. How how was it? Um, you know, uh, the process to get to America first of all, and also how was it running in America? Like I didn't get that much opportunity to race there because when I got there, I was told. I'm going to redshirt, so which means I can't run for a whole cross-country season, a whole track season. So, uh, to an extent, I got frustrated as well. 
But I also knew I'm only going to be there for two years. You see, because then I'm going to come home, and I felt that God wanted me to achieve certain things from home, because yeah. it's going to motivate people more. Because at the end of the day, they see me going to jog, they see me going to training, whatever the case may be, and they have yeah. access access to talk to me. You see, so I felt like I'm not going to stay there long. I'm just going to, you know, Americans have this mentality; they believe they're the best. And in this sport, I feel like you need that to believe yeah. in yourself. You see. So I felt before going there, I still lacked confidence in my running abilities, whatever the case. But when I came back, I was a firm believer that whenever I step foot on that uh, start line, my money is going to be on me. So I felt like God only wanted me to be there for that short period so that I can adapt that mentality of the Americans. Yeah, absolutely, because I mean, I think it was exactly that. You left uh, South Africa uh, when you came back. Uh, you know, you came back with a, a new energy. You were more aggressive. You were more you know focus you knew exactly uh what you needed to do and definitely you, which is which is end of the day like yo man like i mean i i know people sometimes you lose it and you can you know there's a difference between being humble ne and 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 and, and being somebody who retreats and is afraid to fight and you know what i'm saying it's a thin line you know being humble but is, i feel uh, like people they they mistake um confidence and conceitedness in the sport Like yeah, yeah. if you if you run yourself into the ground every day at training, then you must believe in yourself. Because why are you uh-huh. in the sport? You get what I'm saying. And I feel like the people in the sport they are we are we are soft people, so we are very scared. Because <laughs> if we lose, then you get what I'm saying. Then because like you, see, you know how it goes. But at the end of the day, it's all about believing in yourself and believing the work you put in. Because no one wants to work hard to be second base. You get what I'm saying. Yeah. So I'm not working hard to be second base. No, absolutely, man. I, 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 I agree. And I mean, it's, it's, it's exactly that. I think that's why a school sport is, is so, is, is so much more fun, you know, because you know, like I, when I think about it, like uh, when you're running, you always hear there's this guy from this other part of the town. He's called Ferrari. Hey, Ferrari says he's gonna beat you when he, when he sees you. And I'm thinking, even hey, now, who is this Ferrari? I don't know him. You know what I mean? Uh, one day when I get him, it's, it's, it's going down. Yeah, uh, and it's. It's just that fun, childish element about of competition. You know, it's not personal. It's just, uh, <laughs> it's like boxing, man. It's like yeah. you know, it's like a contact sport somehow. But obviously, there's there's a line where you just have to respect each other. End of the day, but hey, when it comes to stepping on the line, it's me versus you. <laughs> yeah, like I came from a school where I wasn't even the best runner. The amount of <laughs> depth was at that school. <laughs> so I was always, I was always underdog. So I was always just trying to be better each and every day, and then, yeah. like I said, when I came from America, I just got the other kind of mentality. Absolutely, man. We'll we'll, we'll get to that uh, that mentality. So now, if you must choose, obviously, the thousand five was a lucky event. You recently ran a three fifty eight mile. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's a dream mile, man. It's a dream mile. Um, I remember it at, was it at Oatsware and on the road. Yeah, we missed it by point three, point three or something. <laughs> Me, you, and the way we missed the test. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. There was a, there was a lekker race, you know. But I mean, to do it on the track is like, uh, you know, that 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 stamps you as one of those. You immediately yeah. know you you set apart, you know. You 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 yeah. one of the elite uh, athletes who ran a, a a dream mile. Um, run us through that. How, how was that feeling, you know? And then with that, I want to ask: one thousand five hundred or three thousand steeple chase? Which event? Okay, I'm a steeple chase, in and out. I'm a firm believer. I'm a steeple chaser. Okay, okay, cool. But yeah, with with a mile, I feel like this was all God. You know, the fact that we missed it back in Oatsworth in 2018 by 0.3, it's it's close. But yeah, 19. you know what? With the, with the three mile, they came they came lots of exposure now. The last the last week or so, I think it was like three or four newspaper articles, radio interviews, lots of messages from people, foundations, whatever the case may be. So I feel like. God knew at this point, I won't get carried away with whatever is happening. So maybe if it happened in Oatsworth, I was probably going to get carried away with all what's happening because I was young at the time. I was like 21, you see. But, yeah, yeah. So it just shows that God works in for good now. The laws because like I'm I'm not carried away by this because when I woke up the Tuesday morning, I was like, nah, it's time now. Time to get up, go back to work. The season is still long. Let's focus mm-hmm. on what's ahead and let's just leave yesterday where it is. You see. 
So that's like I'm not bothered by it. Um, the season, like I said, the season is still long. I still have a uh, lots of races coming up. So it's just one day at a time, and not bothered about what happened yesterday. Just trying to be better tomorrow. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, like you said, the the season is still long, and yeah, there's still so much to achieve before you can sit back and be like, okay, now, nah, yeah, tick off uh, everything we need to tick off. So yeah, man, definitely a good mentality. So let let's take it uh, to uh, what is it twenty twenty nineteen now twenty nineteen obviously that's uh, it's a it's a it's a big year because you you know you get to run at uh, world students that year just run us through like preparation that season before and then you know also towards uh, going to 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 uh, world student world university games okay so in twenty eighteen we had I feel like we had a really good winter. Because for like three to four months, I was smashing between 160 to 180 k's. Because at the point, I didn't have a coach. That time, no. I didn't have a coach. My coach at that time was in Kenya, so I was like, "Hey, let me focus on my own." So I was running 160 to 180 k's. So that's a really hard foundation to have going into no. a track season. And yeah. then that that October of 2018, then I started training with Coach Ruben. So the whole system and philosophy changed, you know. So. At what Coach Ruben was, but he just did on how we feel. So I would consult with Coach Ruben. He would do his thing, and then he, would, like he said, he's led by the Holy Spirit, which I'm a firm believer. If you are led by the Holy Spirit, nothing can stop you. Um, <laughs> so I joined Coach Ruben in October, and we just cut down on all that 160 to 180 k's a week. Um, so when we went to the street miles, we were really strong because, like you said, we missed the three mile back point thing, and we knew we're just going to use 2019. As like an experience, because we knew yeah. 2020 was the year, and we want to go to the Olympics in 2020. So 2019 yeah. was just gaining the necessary experience. How I can compete in Europe? What needs to be worked on? You know how it goes. Because when yeah. we get to the Olympics, we don't want to be tired or train or whatever the case. So I feel like the fact that I won eight out of ten races in the 2019 season. After that, when then I told Coach Ruben, I'm, I'm going into world students. I'm going there to win. And Coach Ruben, he said he believes in me. And mm-hmm. as a coach, who was on the on on the international stage to tell you he believes in you, it gives you more confidence, you know, yeah. because like he understands how the sports work. He finished third at World Students in two thousand and five or something around about there. So for him to tell me he believes in me and he believes that I can do it, it just gave me also lots of confidence. Like yeah. you remember when we were in Finland, I told you, hey, I got kicked out in Sweden. <laughs> I, I I just got back from flu. <laughs> But yet I went into that race in Finland. Cold it was cold that day, and I and I was just aggressive. Yeah. You see, and the fact that I feel like that race in Finland also gave me the confidence going into those students. Because when I was there in the home up area, hey, I was I was telling myself, God is a God of principle, and <laughs> He knows who wants it the most on the day. But I was also I was also a bit scared because the guy that won had a twenty two PB. And we're like, oh, hey, I'm coming here with my 8:43. But I knew that wasn't a true reflex, true reflection. And as someone who analyzes the sport after the heats, where I, I think I finished fourth or third, I'm not sure. I just went back and I was like, I, I'm actually quicker than these guys over the hurdles. I'm more aggressive than them when it comes to my running style, and I'm not scared of taking it out if I should, because that's what I did in the heats. I took it out, yeah. and I was like, okay, my money's on me going into the final. Yes, but then. With seven hundred meters to go, it was me and this guy alone, <laughs> and I was like, "Hey, hey, let me be patient." But when that guy gave the first move, ah, then I was like, "Hey, let me run another round for second or third." <laughs> But when I was done, I was actually upset. I'm like, like you, the picture you used for the advertising, you can see I wasn't happy on yeah, the podium. You, I was upset. You car, you like ah. I was like, "Nah, I'm not happy." I I felt that yeah. it was my opportunity to win world students. So yeah. like I'm not happy with this, and that. Then I told myself I'm coming back in what is it now 2021, and I'm I'm probably gonna try and finish that unfinished business. <laughs> yeah, man. So it was just a whole good now? 2019. Like yeah. now I'm not the fact that we had this discussion this morning about this guy being cool and stuff. It's it's out of my control. Like it's old stuff, you know. I only feel I feel bad for Ranso and the guy who finished fourth, because you know things could have been so different. Yeah. At the moment, I'm not sure if Ran. I don't think Ranso is still with Puma. But the fact, if he had to win World Students and he was on the podium at that point first, etc., 
Life life could have been so much different for him and for the guy of Canada who also lost his sponsors after World Student, you see. So I'm not bothered about me. I'm more concerned about those two guys. Because like I said, life could have been so much different for them. But instead, yeah, they would end up losing so. their sponsors after that. Yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Okay. But uh, obviously, like, like when you think about, um, you know, that, that moment and the whole experience of, you know, being able to stand on the podium and so on. When you reflect on it now, is it, is it uh, obviously on the day you're disappointed and you're like, ah, I want to win. When you reflect on it now, do you, still, do you still have the same feeling or is it a bit different? No, like I said, it's in the past. I can't, I, I'm not bothered with what's in the past. But, you know, yeah. stuff like that should fuel one, you know. Because when you yeah, go yeah. again out, when the opportunity presents itself again to represent South Africa or whatever the case may be, you, you just want to try and be better, you know. So that's why I'm not bothered what 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 happened in 2019. It's 2021 now. It's two years later. It's just yeah. now to be better this year. Absolutely. So role models coming up. Did you have any role models? Was there anybody you looked up to? Actually, uh, Coach Ruben. Coach Ruben <laughs> was on my math book. <laughs> I had a picture of him on my math book in grade nine. Wow. Yeah. But I was upset with Coach Ruben. I told him I was upset with the way he raced in 2011 at World hey, Champs. I, at World Champs, yeah. That guy ran, eight, Coach ran 811 in the heats. I was like, hey, no one is beating this guy in the final. <laughs> but yo, I told him, ah, Coach, I'm upset. I was upset that time. Because <laughs> when, when that year finished, I threw that old math book away. I was like, ah, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Because I was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was telling people, hi, hey, coach is going to win world champs. He's going to win world champs. But, ish, but I feel like, like you said, God had other plans at that, that day. So we, just, we, like, we always have to trust God's plans, you know, because it's always working for our good. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I was, that whole 2011 season, you know, I trained with, I trained with Ruben, like the whole, like a, a, a lot of his build up, especially when I was shopping up to go to worlds and whatever. We were training together with the, at that time, Den, Den Muchoke was in South Africa, yeah. like his Kenyan coach. And, you know, that man, when, I, when, you, when you talk about a soldier. <laughs> yeah, because it was. <laughs> yeah. Coach Ruben said, that guy, make you, you will run yourself into the ground every day. I remember every we did day. a warm-up. We did a warm-up. <laughs> and, you know, when you jog, the coach is like, faster, faster. I'm in <laughs> but the session hasn't started. I'm yeah. running my legs, finish in the warm-up. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get into the session but I mean yeah like I mean he's, a, he's an amazing person uh, he makes you feel so welcome he knows how to make everybody part of the journey but yo he, this work work rate is fantastic and I mean if, if that can rub off onto you and you know you can get a lot of his experience I know he learned a lot about training too hard and balancing yeah. and listening to the body that's what so, you're always telling me like mm-hmm. we we're not going to run ourselves into the crowd like he did when he was running because he said Usually when he came to the major championships or whatever tired. the case, he was usually tired. Because remember yeah. back then it was the yellow pages. So mm-hmm. coach had to peak for like eight to nine months. And to maintain the peak for so long, it's, it's, it's more mental than a physical battle. So yeah. the fact that coach could run 11 after a, such a long season, yo, it just shows coach was mentally strong. Absolutely. Shout out to uh, coach Ruben Ramulefi, the SA record holder. Uh, hopefully one day we'll see that record uh, move, eh? but yo, it's that, still, it's, it's still looking the, nice. Eight eleven. <laughs> yeah, that if coach will tell you that's the plan. Because <laughs> I remember <laughs> the the first day when coach and I started talking, coach told me, that for, "I want you to be, be better prepared than what I was when I was running. So if you yeah. do and listen what I say, you will at least run eight oh five. At least that's what he said. But I, I I'm a firm believer we can go faster." Yeah, of course, man. I always want to go faster. But yo, 805. 805, you can medal anytime. You know what I mean? Anytime. <laughs> like I said, we, we're not in the sport to be second base. We, we, it's like you train, you run yourself into the ground every day. So regardless of what people say or what they were, but you have to believe in yourself. Because yeah. remember, when I was younger, no one believed in me. Like I said, I wasn't even the best runner at my school. Yeah. But over all these years, everything I went through, like there's this Bible verse, James, as James 1, 2 to 4, it says, you should find joy in trials because it's preparing you for what's ahead so it can provide Absolutely. full endurance. So everything I went through over the years, it's, it's preparing me for this. That's why I'm not getting carried away with whatever is yeah. happening now. You see, 
So it's all about being patient, believing in yourself. Because you know, there's always that people. They don't want to see you. But then you're going to have to believe in yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I say, you know, it's, it's one thing, you know, for people to believe in you. But if you don't believe in you, it doesn't matter. You know, it'll always, they'll always talk about potential and what you could have done. But until you figure out and realize that you can do it, like it's a switch, yeah. you know, until you hit that switch and you, you believe it, it's not going to happen. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter how positive your coach or your family and your mom. It's about your yourself. Dad. It's yourself. What's going on in your ideas? Absolutely. Oh, let, there's a few comments here. Let's see here. I see Atehang Lekabe says, Tama Madima, I hope this is recorded for the younger ones to listen on how to follow passion affectionately and with determination. Hey, hey, hey you hear, hear these things about you, Mara. Eh? I'm just Ati, listening. Uh, Andre Ritz says, Ian said, do it. It's an honor to brew it. Uh, we've got Sam Mutaung says, dog eat, dog world, bro. You know how it is, man. Uh, That's how the sport works. Today you're on top of the world. Yeah, tomorrow. But tomorrow you can get chowed. Because there's always exactly. someone coming up, you know. <laughs> but you must know also who's, in this, who's, who's your true friend. Because you know in that sport, when you're on top of the world, everyone wants to be your friend. But when things <laughs> get tough, yeah, then no one is there. But luckily I learned that already. I learned things the hard way. So that's why I know who's, who's who in the zoo. <laughs> I see Lord <laughs> Lord E. Max says uh, I feel your passion bro uh, and uh, what are the, I see uh, yeah, Andre also says this man speaks the truth and then Sepeng uh, Tirele also says excellent mentality bra Ash uh, I see Valu Robert says the champ Mikhail 15 says the mentality uh, Quaid Rumble says love this man's mentality uh, give more run. Welcome to you as well. Who else am I missing? Nick's the runner. Welcome. Yeah, let's carry on. Thanks, guys. Positive. A uh, lot of positive, uh, you know, comments there and so on. So that's good, man. So um, next next question I want to ask is your your motivation. You know, we're getting close to wrapping it up soon. We've got uh, maybe like seven minutes or so. What's your motivation? What motivates uh, Blocky when you play uh, every morning to... Yeah, what is your motivation? Like, you know, be besides loving this, what I'm doing, Temba, this is like for more than myself. Um, like, over the last few months, um, like, people obviously saw I got baptized, so my perspective towards life changed. So, mm -hmm. the fact that I'm trying to use my sport to give God the glory, I feel like that's the best I can do now. And yeah. it will also inspire future generations, you know. Like mm -hmm. I said, I chose the hard way out. Um, and not returning to America, not accepting scholarships um, or yeah. universities up north, universities, whatever the case may be. So, like I said, the people here, they see me every day going to job. They see me running the kids, whatever. So for them to have access to me and seeing what I'm kind of busy doing, even though I'm not happy with where I'm at, but for them yeah. to see me in the newspapers or whatever the, whatever the case may be, it motivates them because they will be like, yo, this guy, yeah, every day walks past us, talks to us, whatever. It motivates them. So if yeah. I can motivate one or two, then I feel like I did what God expected me to do if, with the sport. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. I think it's a good mentality. People are always watching, man. They're always watching. And, you know, the, the thing is always, you know, I was, I was taught um, earlier in my life, like, you know, compliments and criticism, you know, you have to take them the same. You must, they must yeah, run off definitely. Your, your back, like, uh, you know, like water off a duck's back. Definitely. Must, one must not make your head big and the other should not crush your spirit, you know. Definitely. So, yeah, it's, 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 they're good to, they're good to, both of them are good. You can learn from both, but like, don't let both of them get to your, your, your head. But, you know, you know um, like I said, the people in, in this sport will be very soft at times. So if someone gives us criticism, we take it the bad way. Instead of taking it to be better, yeah. we always tend to take constructive criticism the bad way. Like, it's normal. Like, but at the end of the day, it's all how you are as a person and how you see things. If you're someone who loves growth, who loves being better, then I know that wouldn't be a problem. But this, this like, I'm, I'm not being biased or rude towards anyone. But we know this sport is filled with a lot of people that act on emotion and stuff. Like, I've seen it. Like, like I said, if we can just do what we need to do, 
this point will be so much better. But <laughs> people are scared and they act on emotion. <laughs> yeah, man, absolutely, <clears throat> absolutely. So um, we're gonna wrap it up soon. What's the time? Now? Yeah, we've already been pushing uh, 31 minutes. Um, a message, man. What what message do you have for young up and coming athletes, especially like Stipple Chase? You know, I think. Um, there's so much room, man. I think we could have so many more, like, you know, world-class Definitely. Stipuches. We've had them in the past, you know, and, you know, you guys, Ransu, I mean, you, Ransu, at the moment, you guys are holding it down. Um, and we've had others in the... But what, what message do you have to the young young steeple chasers who are looking to to get into this event and they don't want to... Should they, they don't wanna decide, should I do a 1-5 rather or a 5,000? Be- before know? I get into that, Timba... If South Africa can have a similar system like the NCAA, I don't okay. feel that any country in the world would be better. Because if you look at yeah. the times our juniors are running, if we can have that system in place, I feel like South Africa would be a powerhouse in athletics and probably Absolutely. produce the same times we produced in the 80s and in the 90s. Mm. But yeah, um, to youngsters, um, you have to believe in yourself regardless of what people say. There's yeah. the, those goals and dreams... They are there for the reason God put those things there for you. So the fact that people are breaking or putting you off, it just shows that God's proximity is over your life, you know. Mm. Because the enemy doesn't want to see God's proximity over your life. So now he's putting those people in your way to break you down. But if you continue to trust God and believe in yourself, ah, I don't think anything can stop you. Absolutely, man. I 100% agree. Um, that that's just that's how we need to take it, man. We have to take Definitely. it, to trust the process, and you know, continue. You must be humble enough to learn, man. Because hey, definitely, uh, you know, uh, athletics will humble you, chief. Uh, it can give a humble pie every now and again, you know. Even when like I said, like, today you can be doing good. Tomorrow, some some new kid on the block is coming for you. But it's all <laughs> it's part of the sport. It's part of you. It. You can't win every day. Some days you're gonna have to take that L, and some days you're gonna be like you're gonna be a good racing day. But most of the times, like in this sport, there's more bad days than good days. We know how it goes. Yeah, absolutely. But, but eventually, that winning days will come. Just have to continue believing. Yeah, I see. One Stera says, uh, "Bring back the stage <laughs> talk in athletics for the lead, lead up to essays to make it interesting. We need rivalries to fuel our sport." Yeah, people want rivalries, man. Yeah, Blocky. Like I so said, who are you calling out? Here we are. We got Blocky Smith here on back chat. Who's calling <laughs> <out> Blocky? <laughs> so guy, the guys know who they are. The guys know. Who I, they I, are. I, I, we don't know. We don't know. Let me put it like this. I'm coming for my. <laughs> Let me put it like this. I don't have a national title yet. I don't have a national title yet. So I'm coming for my maiden national title. Okay. In you the most humblest really... way. In the most humblest yeah. way. <laughs> you, heard this guy, you heard it straight from Blocky Smith. He says uh, he's coming for the title. Uh, so move out of the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking, man. But yeah, man, absolutely. Uh, it's been a pleasure chatting to you. Uh, thanks for your time, man. Thanks for... Welcome, Timba. Sharing your, 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 a bit of your story. Uh, I know it's not the full story, but I think for, for where you are now and where you're going, I think this is the, the perfect... Uh, start, you know, to just share with the athletic community to where you are and, you know, the future's bright. I think uh, there's a lot to expect in this year. Europe, they must open up Europe so you can go and uh, do some big things there as well. And then from there on, you know, it's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of major championships coming up. So we want to see you. Olympic Games or World Champs, Commonwealth, etc., etc. You know what I'm saying? Yes, definitely. Like I said, we're taking it one day at a time and focusing <laughs> on what I can control. I see Duran is on your case here. Ah, hey, Faro. Faro, don't start with this. He's on your case here. Faro. <laughs> Do you remember what happened in Kutenberg, Faro? On his home ground. On his home ground. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, man, it's good, man. I love you. You know, like for me, like when I, when I think of the 800, nah, there's not a single guy that I don't pick up the phone. I don't, I call them. I'm like, hey, bro, what shape are you in? Are you fit? You know what I mean? I, yeah. I, because for me, as far as I call him as well, hey, what's happening? Because I'm not afraid of the guys being in the best condition. That's the only way we're going to bring back those 144s. I mean, I was, when, yeah, I, when like... I ran 144, I was in that race, bro. I was second. I was like, 
we were pushing pace you know that, that that's that's the only way we're going to do it if we're going to wait in the 1005 then you guys are going to run 338 like, instead like of 332 like the same was with and i last week me and him before the race we said okay we're going 156 157 and then we just going to maintain then then i said i'll take the third lap and then he said okay you'll take the last lap and last hundred each man for himself so the fact that we got the sub for it just shows we work together you see so if if if, if it happens We're gonna get like we're gonna get good times, but ish the guys wanna win with slow times instead. But like if you work together, it's better because the the times was gonna get you into Europe, not your position. You see, yeah. you know, if you, to get good races in Europe, you have to get decent times. You know what I mean? You don't have to. You don't have to explain to me, bruh. Uh, uh, that's my philosophy. That's why every yeah. race I'm in, I go hard. I go hard. Definitely. I'm always pushing for times. But yeah, it's been good. Uh, blocky. Block if you play. Uh it's been really good man. Thanks for your time. Everybody who watched guys, uh, we really appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. It's been good. It has been very good. Otherwise my brother, we'll see you soon man. Take care, keep pushing. Uh stay fit, stay healthy. Uh drink water and mind your own business. <laughs> yeah, thank you Temba. Same to you my friend. See you. <laughs> sharp sharp. Take care guys. Thanks for watching. Uh we'll see you guys again soon. We we'll back later this week. Exciting stuff coming up. There's the Grand Prix. There's uh the obviously the races in Stellenbosch also coming up. So make sure to watch guys and let's keep pushing athletics. See you guys. Take care for me Tama Madima. #diaryvenda #nda. Yes sir. <laughs>